Welcome to the first uh, signal installation of the fast lane. All right here we are looking at a bi-directional intermediate signal. And a little inside look on how the signal system works. Each signal pretty much has a driver circuit and this driver circuit is controlled by a detector circuit. Now interlocking signals also have a circuit that interlocks the system with the position of the turnout. So, let's take a look at the circuitry involved. Now here we are looking underneath the layout just beneath the signal. This right here is the driver circuit for our signal. As you can see it's somewhat complex so we're not going to go into the exact details and how it works. However, it should be noted that this circuit here takes inputs based on track occupancy or turnout setting and gives the signal its appropriate output. So this circuit right here takes just a series of inputs and outputs the signal aspect as you will. Let's take a look at a detector circuit. Okay, here is a track detector circuit that I have not installed yet. As you can see on the left hand side are the detectors output terminals as well as the power terminals. On the right side we have the input terminals which connect into the track. Now the first top terminal here is the track common. This connection goes to the common rail of the track. I should also note that I uh, use a DC system, just conventional DC, so these are equipped only for conventional DC systems. The middle terminal here is the block power, the power coming from the selector, and the bottom terminal here is the wire going into the track. And then over here, top terminal here is the approach light output and down from that we have output 1 and then down underneath output 1 we have output 2 and of course 12 volts and ground are the power right there now this circuit the basic operation of this circuit it pretty much detects the presence of a train in a block it only detects current flow it's a current uh, detector not a uh, what do you occupancy detector so this detector will only detect a locomotive, it won't detect the cars unless the cars have a resistance across their wheels, which my cars don't. But also too, this detector detects the polarity of the current going to the rails. In other words, if the polarity does not favor the governing signal, the governing signal will drop to red based on the outputs. So enough with the technicality stuff, let's take a look at these in action. All right, here's our eastbound side of the signal. Let's take a look with an approaching eastbound train or a clockwise movement. As you can see, the signal activates for the approach lighting. Train passes it, drops it to red. And after the approach lighting circuitry times out, the signal turns off. Now let's see how the westbound signal, the westbound side, reacts to the same movement. And we have another eastbound train but with the perspective of the westbound signal. Signal lights up as soon as the train is blocked. And of course it's red. signal remains on until 
train exits the block and the approach lighting circuitry times out. Once that happens, the signal shuts off. Up next, we got ourselves a westbound mixed freight. Signal comes on as soon as he enters the block. As soon as he passes it, drops it to red. And once the approach light circuit times out, like before, the signal will shut off. Take a look at the eastbound signal with a westbound movement. The eastbound signal with a westbound hopper train led by my newly rebuilt Conrail GP40-2 number 3297. Signal turns on, but of course is red because of the westbound movement. 